Ah, oh, Venom. It's a Spider-Man universe with no Spider-Man. Sony versus, uh, something, I guess. It's very interesting, I guess. Look, it's no secret that the Sony movies, in most part, aren't well received. The current three movies we have are Venom 1, Venom Let There Be Carnage, and Morbius. And all three actually made money back, with Venom 1 being, like, quite massive in terms of box office success. Like, it did very well. But none of these movies are very acclaimed at all. Outside of, like, a cult following, maybe? They just have such massive flaws. I mean, it's a Spider-Man universe without Spider-Man. Like, come on, that's a mind-boggling decision. Something must be done. If they can't be stopped, I can at least offer some insights into what they should be doing to fix this monstrosity they've put before us. I've seen all the movies, sadly, and I thought about it quite a bit, how I personally would fix the entire Sonyverse. So let's do just that. Let's fix the Sonyverse. This will be the Sonyverse as it currently is. Madam Web, Craven, Venom 3 are all set to come out this year, and I have no idea what these movies will have inside of them, so I'm not going to really try to fix them yet. I'm going to say yet because I can all but guarantee all three of these are going to be bad. Venom will probably be fun, but all three of them are almost guaranteed to be trash. We are going to be fixing the current universe, and then maybe as each of these movies release, we will update our fixes for the universe because I know Sony's going to screw it up worse. We're going to have to just keep going back in and fixing it again. Call me Joe Fix It. For now, let's just fix the Sonyverse. I think it's important we just like do like a tiny touch basis on each of the movies, and then we go right into this whole thing, right? Venom is a pretty solid film. The main storyline is good. The side stories and love stories aren't bad, and it's not shoved down our throat. He gets decent screen time, too. Yeah, there's no Spider-Man, but outside of Venom's origins, Spider-Man isn't really necessary. Especially if you're trying to tell good guy Venom story. I, I, I'm just going to reiterate that, though. Spider-Man is definitely necessary for the origin, so no Spider-Man is very bad. Outside of this, though, the rest of the film is not bad at all. Mask! Copy! Tom Hardy was a great Venom, and Venom just looked insanely good. The CGI, in my opinion, is very underrated. Venom being slimy probably aids in that, you know, because CGI makes stuff shimmery. But I don't mind. I don't really care. Venom looks great. But then you move to Let There Be Carnage, and I feel it misses a lot of what made the first Venom so fun. It really doubled down on a lot of the corny jokes and, like, unfunny jokes. Maybe that's just me, you know, not liking jokes is totally subjective. I thought the first movie just took itself more seriously. Not that Venom needs to be serious, but the second movie just was, was goofy through the whole way, and that's not really for me. It felt like Venom was hardly in it. Eddie Brock and Venom are just bickering the whole time. They don't even spend a lot of it together. Carnage is, like, pretty ruthless in it, and you get to see a lot of cool stuff from him. But when you see the concept footage from him, you're like, damn. We definitely could have seen some way cooler stuff than this. The story is a bit of a slog to get through, and I don't know, it just feels like it drags its feet all the time. Venom's not really fighting random people or anything. He's just, like I said, bickering with each other. Carnage is really doing all the exciting stuff, and like, Venom should be doing exciting stuff too. He should be a superhero. The movie just didn't hit like the first Venom film. And then lastly, we have Morbius, which in my opinion was just ass, buns, booty booty butt cheeks. Seriously, it felt so boring. I don't often hate movies, but this is literally a bottom two movie I've ever seen in my life. Milo is like the one redeeming quality of this entire film. This guy who played the character, he can act his ass off. But yeah, the rest of it just felt so boring. It's very poorly lit. The CGI looks terrible. Like, confusingly bad, honestly. It's just so odd. None of it is interesting, I promise you. And then, boom, after credit scene with Vulture. Not much else to say about this movie. The memes were hilarious, and that's about it. It's morbid time. Let's look at the major issues for starters, okay? What issues need correcting? If you think the MCU has a problem with killing its villains too soon, wait till you see any of the three Sony movies in which every single villain in all of them dies. All of them. The only one maybe arguable character who's a villain that doesn't die, maybe, is when the bell falls on Shriek, and it's like, she's supposed to be dead. It's a cliffhanger, and you don't actually see the body, so you're probably thinking she's alive, because that's the rule in Hollywood. But by all, like, all means, she should be dead. A bell just landed on top of her from freaking five stories in the air. This makes it very hard to directly state a villain as the big bad of the universe, because there's no one to set it up. The very first Avengers movie at least showed off Thanos. Then we had, like, what, nine to ten years building on that, following it up before we actually, like, had a huge fight against Thanos and the run back? There's nothing like that in the Sony-verse. It's just an anti-hero fighting someone with significantly worse morals than them, and it's just so clear that the anti-hero is really just a hero, and then the hero kills them. Sony should really stop doing this, seeing as how every movie they have to create another new villain and donate a lot of screen time to that character, just to continuously kill them off again, and do it again, and do it again. It's like I'm watching the same movies. Reoccurring villains make sense in cinematic universes. 
Then you have overarching storylines that run multiple movies and set stuff up for further movies down the line. It's almost as if this isn't actually a universe they want to plan out. They just want to say it's a universe and be like, hey, we're competing with Marvel and I guess DC. Like, you're really not. You're not. You're competing with yourself to be the worst possible thing out there. Going forward, Sony's got to find a villain to work towards. Noel is like a little too much for the entire universe, in my opinion, because he's like a galaxy universal threat. But it's something, right? Carnage honestly would have been great, but he's dead. I would do anything for them to bring him back for so we could have Carnage in this universe as like the big bad. Come on. Toxin is way more of a good guy than a bad guy. It's so odd. Sony is obsessed with making a villain's universe. And well, Sony has a massive and diverse gallery of Spider-Man villains to choose from. It's just hard to choose one when there's no Spider-Man in this universe for them to battle. Morlin would be awesome. Morlin would be a great character to see as like a big bad for a cinematic universe. His whole thing is he kills and fights Spider-Man or he fights the spider totems in Spider-Verse. There's none of those in here, so we can't even use someone like Morlin because there's no Spider-Man. We could always change what his character is about, but then are we really using that character anymore? All of these characters pretty much have beef with Spider-Man. Sony has got to figure out a new big bad villain to work towards. Sony needs to also fix the other mistakes in their universe too, like Vulture being transplanted into universe. Like he's here. Fine, we're not going to just remove him, even though they just removed Venom and No Way Home and he didn't even really show up. But the universe changing made zero sense at all. Think about it. The spell brought people to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Why the heck did the Vulture get sent out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe into a universe without Spider-Man? It was supposed to be bringing in people who knew Spider-Man. It makes no sense. How the Vulture acts afterwards also is like really odd. It's kind of like a different character. When we see the Vulture in the MCU, we know he thinks Spider-Man is like a reasonable person. He's like a stand-up guy. When we see the Vulture Morbius, he's like, I think Spider-Man is the reason I'm here. And he's like all sinister and whatnot. But in Homecoming, Vulture literally recognizes that Spider-Man is like a pretty stand-up caring guy. Spider-Man literally saves his own daughter. When Mac Gargan goes up to Vulture to ask who Spider-Man is, Vulture protects his identity. Like, it seems not like they have camaraderie, but they have at least respect for each other. And then you go to this movie in this universe, it's like a whole new sinister vulture. He's much more eviler. He didn't have a vendetta really against Spider-Man. Spider-Man was just an obstacle. All he wanted to do was feed his family. He, just, he, he was trying to make ends meet. So when Vulture gets transferred into a universe with no knowledge of anything in this universe, don't you think he would search out Spider-Man for help? The dude has already shown he respects him. He already knows Spider-Man would pretty much help anybody in need no matter what. Vulture tried to kill him constantly and Spider-Man still kept helping him. Like, I, I just don't understand. I really don't understand it at all. And then when you think about it, his vendetta is also against a character who technically doesn't exist. Because he's not in this universe. So he's like, I think Spider-Man is the reason I'm here. And then Morbius is like, ha ha ha, it's not so. It's like, it can't be. Because he's not here. He's not in this universe. So it's like, who are you guys even mad at? Sony... Please put Spider-Man in this universe. It would clear up so many issues. And now that we've listed a bunch of those issues, let's start fixing the Sony-verse, okay? First, let's do this under the guise that Sony will not be using Spider-Man. They've been hell-bent so far not using Spider-Man. I'm just going to give them insights on how to do it without Spider-Man because that's probably the only thing they're going to listen to. And then later on, I'll give the one with Spider-Man because that one's just so much more obvious they would never go for it. It's Sony. Creating the best possible Sony-verse without Spider-Man. For starters... Sony needs to really define who's good and who's not. Like, Venom is he's pretty easy. Without a doubt, Venom's a good guy. And then you've got Riot and Carnage, who are both presumed dead, but they're pretty much certainly evil, right? Pretty clean cut. But Morbius, is he a good guy or not? Like, he stops Milo, but then he meets with the Vulture, who's from another universe, and they kind of talk about Spider-Man, and they talk as if they're evil and teaming up to stop him. Based on this after credit scene, it seemed as though, to me, that he would be a villain working alongside the Vulture, and assembling the Sinister Six. Because Sony's like obsessed with the Sinister Six for some reason. Like literally obsessed with that thought. He would make for a really solid villain for Venom to fight as well. Because he's like super duper strong and powerful. While also having like a clearly defined weakness. Much like Venom. Venom versus Morbius would save us from another like goo battle. Or giant slosh battle of symbiotes. But I don't know why the symbiotes fighting each other looks so bad. But the vampires fighting each other somehow looks so much worse. It doesn't make any sense. Anyways, so we got Morbius as a villain, and Vulture's here too for some reason, and they want to fight Venom. This doesn't sound too bad, but like, why? Why are they fighting Venom? Why are they opposing each other? Why is the Vulture even here? The Vulture one should be explained not by No Way Home, like they tried showing us because that makes literally no fucking sense. But you know what could explain random villains appearing in a new universe? 
Spider-Verse! In Spider-Verse, it's an actual story. It's a part of the story that in other random universes, villains are just getting shot out and put into other universes. You could easily just be like, oh, because of Spider-Verse and the freaking time warp or whatever, or space and the time continuum, Vulture slipped through the cracks and now he's in this universe. Makes sense, actually. For some reason, I know that sounds weird, but it does make sense. There's already a very reasonable explanation set forth by the current canon. So let's not do this stupid nonsense and explain it with the no way home. Let's do it with something that makes sense. Okay, Vulture being here because of the Spider-Verse portals makes sense. Now why is Vulture and Morbius fighting against Venom? Morbius showed he has like no motivation of being like a higher evolutionary being in the movie when Milo was trying to convince him that the two of them had evolved past being humans. He constantly shot this notion down. So it's not like I can just say Morbius has some god complex evolution thing and now he wants to take out Venom. A better way for Sony to go about this in my opinion would be for Vulture to be gaslighting him into thinking they're trying to find Spider-Man. As he said in his cheesy ass after credit scene, here has to do with Spider-Man I think. There's no Spider-Man here. But he's trying to work with Morbius. Naturally Adrian Toomes isn't aware of the lack of Spider-Man in this universe. Okay. Cool. Vulture is livid obviously because Spider-Man imprisoned him. Okay. Cool. We have Vulture convince Morbius to work with him as he makes Spider-Man seem like a villain. You know, he talks about how Spider-Man ruined his life and everything went to hell because the Spider-Man got involved. Morbius would begin to feel bad and want to help the Vulture, right? That makes sense. As Vulture gains his trust though, Vulture would then sabotage Morbius' own treatments. So Morbius would start going more and more feral and become more and more violent. Morbius and Vulture would begin robbing places, gearing up to fight Spider-Man, right? They'd get hired guns, forming a mob, the whole shebang. But there is no Spider-Man, remember? I think it'd be cool if, like, the longer the Vulture was here, he realized that, like, there's no Spider-Man. This is kind of a good thing for him because he realizes no one can stop him from being powerful and rich and just robbing places now that he's so powerful. And he's got Morbius as his right-hand man as, like, a dog on a leash vampire style. Like, I think, I think this could be quite dangerous if you think about it. No Spider-Man to stop him. No other superheroes to stop him. It's just Vulture using a feral Morbius to, like, ransack cities and become super rich and take over. Sounds pretty cool. Things start to get bad with Morbius becoming more and more violent. Vulture has to think of an excuse for the lack of finding Spider-Man, right? He sees footage of Venom and he lies to Morbius about how Venom must be this universe's Spider-Man. This gives Morbius reassurance that Spider-Man exists so he continues to trust the Vulture. I am Venom. Also, this scene literally makes no sense. Pretty much nobody in the universe has any knowledge of Venom's existence. And if they did, they're probably dead. Or there is ex girlfriend who's like kind of still in love with him and not gonna tell anybody. There's no reason Morbius knows who Venom is. Why did they put this in here? Now that Morbius believes there's a Spider Man in this universe, he would then begin to trust Vulture so much more, right? Vulture could also use that to his advantage. He can say that this Spider Man Venom character was stopping them from getting blood for Morbius, which is causing him to go more and more feral. This would obviously make Morbius more and more angry with Spider Man, who's really Venom, and it sets up them fighting very naturally. Makes sense in the story, makes sense in the plot. Vulture just looks like a skeezy bad guy who Sony wanted to turn him into with this after credit scene for some reason. He wasn't really like this in No Way Home, but we're just going to roll with it because that's what Sony wants for some reason. You now have Morbius and Vulture working together. How did Vulture get here? Well, that's explained by Spider-Verse portals. Well, why is Vulture and Morbius working together? Vulture tricked Morbius into working with him. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Why are they fighting Venom? Vulture told Morbius Spider-Man was here and he was ruining lives and Morbius' life, but it was really Venom the whole time. Morbius has no idea who Venom is, so he believes it. Morbius becomes more and more violent, wanting to fight Venom. Now we have a reason for Vulture being here, a reason for the team up, and a reason for Venom to get involved and for them to go after Venom. I'm not saying this is peak writing and if Sony doesn't do this, they're dumb, but this is at least reasoning that works and makes sense within canon. This spell does not send people out of universe. It's like a massive plot hole so that Vulture ends up here. Sony needs an actual explanation for this. I'm offering them one. Guarantee they do something even dumber. I guarantee it. Okay, now Spider-Man. We're doing the version with Spider-Man. This is definitely the version I'd much rather see, and I'm happier to talk about it. So let's just get into it, okay? Sony can put Spider-Man in this universe. They can. They actually choose not to, but they have every right to use Spider-Man in their movies. That's literally in their contract with Marvel. I truly do not understand why they don't. All the movies have been financially successful, sure, but it's very clear and obvious that Spider-Man prints money. You want to see all movies that were financially successful? Look at any Spider-Man movie that ever came out. Jesus Christ. Putting him in these movies would only make more money. There is no universe in which putting Spider-Man in this Sony-verse makes them lose money. None. But how would we put him in this universe? There's clearly no Spider-Man currently in the universe. 
This is confirmed not to be Andrew Garfield's universe already. As of now, there's just no Spider-Man. Well, we have multiple options we can choose from. We could always just have a kid become Spider-Man. Have him get bitten and have him go through an origin story and become the universe's Spider-Man. It's crazy that Sony doesn't even want to take this idea. Just, just a Spider-Man. Just have Spider-Man. Again, Sony can do this. This is, in my opinion, the best idea for long-term success because like, you could build up this Spider-Man and he's going to be in this universe for a long time. It doesn't even have to be Peter Parker. Miles Morales would work. Cindy Moon would work. Spider-Gwen. Ben Riley, Kane. Any of these would work. There's currently none. So any of these people could take the mantle with no issues. There's already villains, and I use that term very loosely, for Spider-Man to fight. They just need to like give him a movie and boom, you have your own Spider-Man in your universe. Wow, that was so hard. Except we all know Sony, they would never go for this. It just makes too much sense. Sony would much rather do like a quick band-aid cash grab situation than, you know, sustain success. That's not Sony's thing, at least for Spider-Man movies. The next point I have for Sony I think they can use going forwards is with the Spider-Verse portals to explain how Spider-Man got into this universe. Either have the Spider-Society send someone to this universe to like stop Vulture and like bring him back. And maybe he sticks around and helps mentor like a young Spider-Man or something. That could work. Personally, I would love to see Andrew Garfield transplanted into this universe by the portals. He's just, he's just like stuck in this universe for the time being. I think that could be cool. I choose Andrew Garfield because to me, it feels like his universe as a whole is like kind of forgotten. Outside of Emma Stone's Gwen, the rest of the universe is just kind of eh. On top of the fact that Gwen's like dead, so she's not even in that universe either. We're just left with like not many storylines outside of Andrew fighting a potential Sinister Six that never came to fruition. Tom is in the midst of the MCU. I don't think I have to explain why it would be hell to have him also in the Sonyverse. It would just be awful. And then Toby, on the other hand, he feels like his universe is like still got a lot going on with it. People would love to see a Spider-Man 4 and like continue the Toby universe. More J.K. Simmons, more Kirsten Dunst, more Peter Parker, that's Tobey Maguire. People love these guys. Not saying people don't love the people of the Amazing Spider-Man universe, but it's definitely not received the same way. Let's be real, guys. I think I speak for most when I say I would much rather see Spider-Man 4 than Toby team up with Tom Hardy's Venom. I'm sorry. Just doesn't do it for me. Andrew, on the other hand, feels like Spider-Man on standby. He never really got to conclude his story, so like he can just jump into any universe and continue a story from there. That's how he feels to me. People aren't clamoring for The Amazing Spider-Man 3, but they are clamoring for Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. Andrew Garfield could be the Spider-Man for the universe going forward, but I personally really would urge Sony to still try and set up a younger Spider-Man, have Andrew mentor him or her, it would feel weird to just have, like, Andrew back and stuck in a different universe forever. He's the amazing Spider-Man, and as much as his universe is kind of whack and lame and corny and, and dumb and stupid and bad, it's his universe. Like, if you took me out of my universe and put me somewhere else and said, this is your new universe forever, I'd be kind of tight. I swear to God, if I hear any Miles Morales people come in here, I'm going to rage. If anyone brings up Miles Morales, I don't want to hear it. That's like a world-ending, universe-ending event. If Andrew Garfield's The Amazing Spider-Man universe was going to end, then yeah. Put him in a different universe. Put him in the Sony universe moving forward. But like, that's not a storyline they were running with, okay? Do not bring up Miles. Don't invoke his name. It works way better for Andrew Spider-Man to be here temporarily, but he helps kick off and start a new Spider-Man's life that can be a Spider-Man for that universe going forward. The other option Sony does have, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did this because Sony is all about the quick cash grab. They see something's working and they're just going to steal the idea would be to take the new Ultimate Spider-Man storyline. They could have Andrew Garfield or a different actor, but I think Andrew Garfield literally looks exactly like Peter Parker with a beard. And then you could have Andrew Garfield be married with a family and married to MJ just in this universe. He's a variant. Remember, this isn't like the Amazing Spider-Man to Andrew Garfield. This is just a variant. And if they wanted to go wild, they can go like balls to the wall deep and have Emma Stone's Gwen be the person he marries in this universe. People would rage. But it could be fire. Just saying. And then have him get bitten as an adult, just like in the current Ultimate Spider-Man storyline. And now he's this universe's Spider-Man going forward. You still have Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, who everybody loves. You can still have the one detail of the other universe and Emma Stone's Gwen back in this universe as a variant as well. People would love that. And then you have Spider-Man as a grown adult. We haven't actually seen that in live action really ever. Toby's the closest we got him for No Way Home, but I would love to see a full-fledged, like, family man Spider-Man. Honestly... No matter what they decide to go with, Spider-Man needs to be in this universe. There's no shot that adding Spider-Man in this universe makes it lose money. Absolutely none. It's a miracle Morbius even made money with how bad of an IP it is in the first place. It's not that popular, everybody. It only became popular after the movie because of the memes, and even still, it barely made its money back. 
Sony can't continue to just make doggy woggy movies and then bank on the fact that they're Spider-Man adjacent characters and hope that it succeeds. Put Spider-Man in the movies! It worked for Venom. He's one of the most sold comic book characters since he was created. It makes sense that maybe a Venom movie can work on its own, right? But Morbius? Morbius? These two are not the same at all. Then look at the slate of movies coming out. Madam Web? Madam Web? How many comic appearances does she even have? Craven? Craven has one good story. One. He's been a character for like six, 50 years. One good story in 50 years? Are you serious? He's getting his own movie? Like, I don't want to see like Doc Ock and Green Goblin get their own movies and not have Spider-Man in it. But like, these are at least A, S tier characters, A tier characters. Madam Web? These movies are all banking on fans seeing them solely for the potential to see Spider-Man show up. And he never has. He never has. This can't continue. Put Spider-Man and Venom teaming up against a common enemy and watch money literally roll in. It's not rocket science. They caught lightning in a bottle with how successful Venom was and are continuously squandering it. Success has happened for sure. That's an arguable. But it's decreasing at an insanely steady rate at over the course of the last three movies. Can anyone honestly tell me why Sony vehemently refuses to use Spider-Man? Again, it's well within their contractual rights with Disney to use Spider-Man in a live action film. They act like they're allergic to him. I need to know why Sony doesn't use him. Why won't Sony add Spider-Man to a Spider-Man universe? It makes no sense. Add Spider-Man to this universe. The Sony universe is trolling. As of now, with or without Spider-Man, it's just hella goofy. It needs some serious works and revisions to make it work. People who actually love Spider-Man need to be put in charge instead of those who just want to make a quick buck. Fans can feel passion in projects and want to see that passion. Yes, it may take longer to set up, but the payoff is going to be an actual stable universe which leads to stable financial success. It's also so crazy to me they started a Spider-Man universe without Spider-Man. Literally what? This is how I would fix the current Sony-verse. But Madam Web is coming out in like a couple weeks, so... I might be back here again for you guys trying to fix this mess all over again. We started memberships on the channel, guys. I'm trying to increase the channel's production value a little bit. If you guys could help me out, I would appreciate it. Having a membership is going to help you out. You can contact me more. Your messages are going to get highlighted as well. I will respond to you guys. Shout outs at the end of the videos and an exclusive Discord lounge. Chatting with me in future videos. Come now. Come now. Join in. Dunk out. Peace.